When it comes to RTK stat sheets or brochures or whatever you wanna call them, there's a lot of useful information and then there's a lot of BS. In this video, we're gonna break down the five ways RTK manufacturers mislead you and how to catch them in their tracks. So let's jump into it. So the first thing I wanna talk about is channels. But before we understand why channels can be a misleading concept, we need to know what a channel is. So, I've written out this cute little diagram here of a GPS RTK receiver and a satellite. All a channel is square peg hole for a square peg. So what that means is for every signal that a satellite sends, there is one spot in the receiver that it can be received at. Now, so if you have more channels, you can have more signals. If you have less channels, you can have less signals. And manufacturers will boast about how many channels they have, trying to tell you that's how many signals that they can see but the way that they count them is often misleading so it's not super helpful anymore back in the day the amount of channels you had was paramount but now there's so many channels that it's a bit redundant so traditionally channels were really important because you only had so many channel spots and you're gonna get some good signals some bad signals so if you only have a finite amount of channels sometimes your GPS solution is gonna be overpowered by bad signals. Also, their engines weren't as powerful at reducing noise. But nowadays, we see so many signals and our engines are so robust that channels are a kind of a redundancy. But what's more important is the quality of the frequencies we can see. So we really wanna be able to see Block 3 satellites. And I'm gonna link one in the description here on a video of what a Block 3 satellite is. And then you want to have a very robust, a very strong GPS engine that's going to eliminate or reduce heavily your noise so the next thing we want to talk about is accuracy so when you're reporting your accuracy your confidence interval is allowed to change some manufacturers will go 95% accuracy and then some manufacturers will go to 67% confidence interval what that means is you can have a tighter correction say a couple of millimeters but it's only 67% of the time that, that you're gonna get that result. Where if you have one that says 95, that's actually a more valuable statistic for you, the end user. And then finally, these tests are done with a base and a rover. So the base will be over here, and then in some situations, they'll just have the rover right over here. In real life, you're gonna have the base over there, and you're gonna have your rover half a kilometer or a mile away, or you're gonna have it on a network. You know, So you're gonna have trees in the way, you're gonna have buildings in the way, that real world scenario for your accuracy might be drastically different than what they tested theirs where the base and the rover are very close together. So it's much more important to talk to fellow surveyors who have used that kind of gear and to look at real world tests like we have on our YouTube that you can see anywhere all around me, I think. Yeah, so that's a really good thing to pay attention to. If you're using a network solution, chances are your accuracy is gonna be a little worse because you have have no control over what satellites your network is using. So if you're using a cores network or a state network or paid for uh, smart net, can net, these kind of things, you have no control over what satellites they're seeing. So it might not be as tight as what your stat sheet says. Third, we have battery life. Battery life is always tested on a rover in perfect conditions. In real life, you're going to be using a base and a rover. Your base eats up battery life are more, which is why you should have things like a power pole, which is going to be linked in the bottom. Uh, the other thing is it's not in harsh conditions. So if it's really hot outside, if it's really cold outside, you're going to lose battery life. That's something they don't want you to know about. So the next thing we're going to talk about is radio range. So radio range is always tested on perfect day conditions. So if you're in a situation where you're in a heavy tree canopy and you're using a receiver that's not made for that, the radios might not be qualified to punch through those canopy and that foliage. So you want to make sure that not only are you getting something with high radio range, but also something that is good in trees or around buildings or whatever obstacles you're finding in your day to day. So finally, we save the best for last. Okay, well, actually, in this scenario, it's the worst for last, but that's paywalls. So a ton of manufacturers and we don't need to name names 
but what they'll do is they'll have all of these awesome features, but you can't actually get them when you buy the device. You have to pay to play. So an example of that is what constellations you see. An example of that could be if you can use your base as a rover and your rover as a base. It could be what radio settings you're allowed to use. It could be any number of things that they're going to hide behind a paywall. We at Benchmark despise that mentality. When you buy gear with us, you get everything we have right off the hop. And that's what business should be like, in my opinion. So if we wanna go over what we talked about in the video today, we went over the common tricks that manufacturers purposely put within their stat sheets so that their equipment looks better than it is or so that you think you're getting more for your money than you are. What you wanna do is you wanna see how the gear works in real life. So you should watch our videos on how the hemisphere works. You should talk to me, I'm Rayal. You should talk to one of our many technicians and we'll get you sorted. We'll make sure that you're taken care of properly and you're not misled.